Hello everyone, welcome to the 29th IS tutorial. In this tutorial, we will talk about asynchronous HTTP requests. In last three tutorials, we talked about synchronous types, but this time we will talk about asynchronous calls. And also we show how to add a spinning wheel for some network requests to show the user that something is going on in the background. So let's move on. Like every other project, I show the final product first. So for this project, uh, we want to show an activity indicator, which is kind of like progress activity first, and then it loads the data. If I run the program, because it moves very fast, see, you would see some activity indicator and then loads the data. So let's create it. Here's the application that we've created in a previous tutorial. In order to add some spinning wheel, uh, for the user to show that something is going on, we're fetching something from the internet. We go to the uh, main storyboard and then from the object library we search for activity indicator. Activity indicator gives you some spinning wheel here. Just drag it and drop it here in the middle. And it has some different kinds so we can select what type you want. And for me, I want large white. And guess what? It's a little bit larger. And I want to select uh, gray as a color. And then I'm done here. I just have to connect a property for this activity indicator in order to access and send command to this activity indicator. So I go to the um, class for this. And uh, let's have a view for both uh, the storyboard and also our class. If you are an automatic, it will uh, automatically pick the class that is uh, dedicated to this view controller. So for here, we have a uh, news TVC. So I create the property by control drag from this to our class and I call it activity indicator activity indicator okay now we're done with the storyboard I go to the news TVC and I see here is my activity indicator where should I put it and the moment that I want it to be started is the time that view is loading so the best place is before HTTP get request because after that it doesn't it's not good so before I send a request I say self dot activity indicator start animating that is simple as it is and when should I stop it when I receive a data and I want to reload the table view so the best place is when we are reloading the table view I would say self that activity indicator stop animating and that's all we just play because the amount of data that we are receiving is very short uh, we receive the response very fast and that's why you just saw the activity indicator at the top for a second and then it loads the data First problem for this uh, design is that uh, we have still this activity indicator. We have to somehow hide it from the screen. And let's do it um, now. Uh, the best place to hide it is when we stop the animator. So we can hide it by sending a command activity indicator dot hidden. This hidden feature and this hidden property is valid for most view and Objective-C. If you have other elements on your view, you can hide it exactly the same view that we are hiding the activity indicator. And you put this property equal to yes. And then once you run the application, it shows it for a second here and then it loads the data and it hides it from the screen. That's all for this. If you don't need your activity indicator for the rest of your application, you can just remove it from your view by sending this command. You can delete this and say remove from super view. And it would do this exact same thing and just remove it from the super view. The type of NSURL connection that we used in previous tutorial was synchronous. It means that it would block the user interface until it finished sending the request and receiving the response. 
But now we want to send a synchronous call. It means that it won't block the user interface. How we can do this? First, we should know that we don't need this REST API .h and .m file for asynchronous file. And it's just one line of code. If we go back to the news tvc.m, since we don't need REST API and .h and .m file, we can remove all of the instance that we created so far. This one, and this is the delegate method of it. This is where we initialized it. And also we don't need the delegate and this one. I just remove this one. And now how we send the request. We used to send a REST API HTTP request. How do we send it right now? We would say NSURL NSURL uh, connection. Oh no, connection connection and then send asynchronous so as soon as I started writing it it gives me the uh, rest of the method and I said request this is the exact request that we created here so an SUR request is our request that we created for queue we use the main queue how do we use the main queue we say NS operation queue this is how we get the main queue NS operation ns operation and use the class method which is main queue and in order to uh, use the completion handler what is completion handler it sends the request and once it receives the data data it will go to the completion handler if you double click here it will let you do add some code here uh, say handle handle response here and then we can close the bracket and instead of the rest API that we had here we can just call our method here which is uh, once we want to and uh, just remove it so what what do we want to do once we receive the response we want to call this method. This is the method that we used to use for receiving the data. Since it's, uh, it doesn't have a REST API, we don't need this part. And we can just call this method. We can say get receive data. How do we call it? We can say self get receive data. And uh, look at this. It needs an NS mutable data. But here, this is the data that we received from the uh, request and it's NS data it's not mutable so we better change this NS mutable to just NS data and then we can add our data here so once it receives the data it will execute this line of code and since we don't have REST API it gives us a two error here let's remove these two and anything else no that will be it. it. As soon as it receives the data, it will execute this method. So let's play it. As you see, we received the data and it was asynchronous. You may say, what if we face some error during the request? So this is a good question. Uh, if we see here, there is an NS error here. And before we call in this method, we can check for any error. We can say if uh, if uh, connection error was not nil, then call this method. So we call this method only if our NS error is nil, and else if we face any kind of error. For this tutorial, we don't handle error, but we just log it. We say uh, connection error dot description. Just send me some description of this error. And we should say percent at sign. Oh, what is this here? Okay. Mm. 
it just need doesn't need a bracket uh, it just mistyped okay it just sends an error and if we want to be more careful sometimes it sends no data and uh, we won't face any error but we need some data and it's kind of like error if we don't receive any data we need to check for this data as well to see if this data is empty or not so we put another condition here we say and 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 we look for the length of the data we say if the length of the data uh, more than zero then we are sure that we have some data and that's how we handle error if we want to check for uh, connection status like if it's connection status 200 or connection status um, 404 or any kind of error we come here and say nshttp and uh, url re response url response and we say http http response we call it nshttp uh, response and we allocate we kind of like cast this response here we cast this response to this type and say ns http response exactly the same that we have here and, and this is how we cast it's exactly like other programming languages response now uh, if we call this we can say easily instead of doing this we can say if this that status code is equal equal 200 so now we know that if the status code of our request response is 200 it will execute this and else if the status code is for example 404 come to this uh, if I say I can say HTTP HTTP response that status code equal equal 400 or 404 or whatever you decide come to this and uh, before this else is eight. but for easy um, error handling and uh, we just go with the one that we just defined the first part I uh, will remove this I just uh, wanted you to, to know how you can handle the uh, status code of response and that's all you, that's how you send the asynchronous call for request hope to see you next time